doing some research and catching up on. Um, whoever is a Disney fan like me, I my favorite story about Disney is Peter Pan. Uh, there's a lot of history that I found out about it, and I it, to watch this as a kid was um, when Mary Martin played Peter Pan. So after I watched that, I fell in love. Actress Mia Farrow also played Peter Pan, and if you remember watching Kate Winslet and Johnny Depp um, Finding Neverland, uh, the actress, which who is Layton's favorite actress, was Kate Maberly. She too played um, Peter Pan near the end of that movie. And uh, the uh, there's only two males that I know that played Peter Pan, well maybe three males, and that was one with the ABC Once Upon a Time one. And then there was the 2005 or so where there was a little boy who too um, played Peter Pan. But then we also know the lovely Robin Williams who played Peter Pan as well in the movie Hook with Austin Hoffman. Um, so it turned out that I was doing this research. I was uh, looking for the original Peter Pan books. Well, I came across them in the Hook where they were talking about why Peter ran away in the first place because he was afraid to grow old and he was afraid of dying. So at the scene, if you remember, where he was in a baby carriage and, you know, his carriage crashed and then Julia Roberts, who played Tinkerbell, you know, came and saved him. And that's kind of like how I feel with uh, this Pretzels in History when we first started it. I, when the first lockdown happened, I felt like I was the Tinkerbell who needed to go to save um, a person with ADD who was a boy and that's when I told Layton, you know, we are kind of like the true uh, Tinkerbell and Peter Pan here. So when I was looking at the originals, I had no idea that James M. B that James M. Barry did not just do Peter Pan. He actually wrote a few books before Peter Pan. And ironically, Disney Stream right now is coming out with one of those originals and it's called Peter and Wendy and then the final was Peter Pan book. So when I went online to look up um, some Peter Pan books, I came across uh, the course first. It was Peter Pan in the Kensington Gardens. And this is, of course, when he was a baby. And I thought, hmm, that's an interesting one. I'm going to buy that one. Then I saw this Peter and Wendy. And I thought, well, that's interesting. So I said, okay, well, I'll buy that one because that was a hardcover and I looked at what year that was and that was really along this uh, book that I'm going to soon be talking about. And then the original version and then finally the final version was Peter Pan. So in 1906, James M. Barry did a book about Peter Pan when he was a baby. And you've got to remember this. It was amazing to me how none of these names were mentioned in this book. So that's when I knew this was before all this happened. So in 1906, his first book was called Peter Pan in the Kensington Gardens. And what's very interesting is this is all about Peter and the fairies weren't really nice. Let's just say they like to pull pranks on the adults by changing the signs around in the park and then they send them into the wrong direction. But they did that for fun and I don't know, you have to read the book because there was much more interesting stuff about the fairies, about like weddings and things like that. And then of course there was like a crow's nest there. How none of these names were mentioned in this book. So that's when I knew this was before all this happened. So in 1906, his first book was called Peter Pan in the Kensington Gardens. And what's very interesting is this is all about Peter from when he was a baby. And how he thought he was a normal boy, but he really wasn't. And the fairies weren't really nice. Let's just say they like to pull pranks on the adults by changing the signs around in the park. And then they send them into the wrong direction. But they did that for fun. And I don't know, you have to read the book. Because there was much more interesting stuff about the fairies. About like weddings and things like that. And then of course there was like a crow's nest there. Uh, all different chapters. Uh, in there and of course Peter was raised by the birds and he thought he was a bird 
and that's kind of how he got to fly. And what was one of his wishes uh, to the queen was uh, the whole person of the queen fairies. She's he said to her, "I would like to see my mom." So at times he would fly to see his mom. And then when he met more friends, he was guaranteed that his mom would always keep the window open. Well, he was always gone for so long that his mother shut the door on him. She had enough because it was too painful for her. She could hear him whispering and things like that. And um, because he would whisper to her to tell her that he loved her and he would touch her hand and... You know, she couldn't bear it anymore. So she closed the window on him. And when she, when he took his one friend to go see his mother and guarantee her that the window would be open, uh, unfortunately that night the window was closed. And there was a thing called lockout time, which, again, you have to read the book. It's very interesting. And I thought that was sad when his mother closed the windows, but then she had another child. And then, of course, like we all know, that Neverland was basically about you know, either heaven or, you know, a dream or, uh, you know, kind of like talking about death. We knew that, that that's what that was about. It was about death. So in the end, the last page that is confusing, and it still is to me, so I'm still trying to figure this out, um, but the truth of it all, and it probably is sad, it kind of talked about a child named Peter that died. Uh, but then again, they make him sound like he's living, so... I don't know what the truth behind that is. But it's a very interesting book. And also, too, there is a map, believe it or not, in this book. The map exactly, I don't know, whoever's been to Disney. I'm sorry, Daddy, you got me going. We're coming when I'm ready. Like I was saying before I got it shut off. So, yeah, this 1906 book, A Peer Pan in the Kensington Gardens, as him as a baby, like I said, really, really good book. Um, I enjoyed it. Like I said, the confu the ending was confusing. I don't know if the little I hope he did survive and um I suggest to read I suggest it's a good read for kids and stuff and base and pretty much that's what it is. It's a good book for kids because it is a children's book, believe it or not, um over in London. I found out that this company called Pook Press, um, P O O K and then Press, what they're doing is they're coming out with the original times of when classic books came out and they're republishing them to make them cheaper. So it is a good read. It is a great children's book, I think. Um, Layton has to read it yet and give me his opinion, but I really do think it's great. And for those that who like Disney and who love the story of Peter Pan, I'm telling you, read this book first and then we'll move on to Wendy. And Peter, because my goal is to read all the series and then tell you guys about each book. So I'm wrapping up um, now just to say that this was a good read for children. And apparently James M. Barry did it in a George Lucas way because Peter and Wendy was his original, came out originally published in 1904. And this came out in the original published date for this book was in 1906. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoy it and you'll have to let me know of how much you like the book. And you can get it off of Amazon. A little respect there for your father. Repeat after me.